John chapter 19, continued. And Pilate wrote a title, and put it on the cross. And the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth the King of the Jews, John 19 19. You will notice, that I have made no attempt to harmonize the other Gospels with the Gospel of John. They are each different, and each is written for a different purpose. You need to put all four of them together to find the complete statement written on the cross. This title was then read by many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city, and it was written in Hebrew, and Greek, and Latin. Then said the chief priests of the Jews to Pilate, Write not. The king of the Jews, but that he said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written, John 19 20-22. It was written in Hebrew, the language of religion. It was written in Greek, the language of culture and education. It was written in Latin, the language of law and order. Thus, it was written for the whole world to see that he died for all. This is the gospel that is to be preached to the world. This is the hope of the world. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments, and made four parts, to every soldier a part, and also his coat, now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. They said therefore among themselves, Let us not rend it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which saith, They parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did, John 19 23-24 when they had crucified Jesus. No gospel writer describes the death of Christ. There are things about the cross and the crucifixion that are hidden from us. God pulls down a veil on many of the details. Darkness covered the land so the people couldn't see. First of all, God is not going to give us morbid details, simply to satisfy our idle curiosity. Secondly, there was a transaction between the Father and the Son taking place there. It was a transaction for the sins of the world, which is beyond our comprehension. The only thing that we can do, is to accept by faith the forgiveness that is made ours through Christ's death on the cross. That is the only way you and I, will ever penetrate that darkness, my friend. Apparently, his garment is a peasant's garment, but a good one. Someone had made it for him. The soldiers cast lots for it, shot dice at the foot of the cross. Although these Romans do not know it, they are fulfilling the scriptures, they part my garments among them, and cast lots upon my vesture, Psalm 22:18. Now, there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother, and the disciple standing by, whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her unto his own home, John 19 25-27. Jesus calls Mary, Woman, just as he had in John 2, at the wedding at Cana. His hour is come. He is to die, but he will rise again. He is to be glorified. His relationship to his mother is to be severed. To her, as well as to us, he is to be the glorified Christ. His resurrection will clear her name forever. Her reputation will be vindicated. But she must come to Christ in faith, just as every other believer comes. While he is dying for the sins of the world, he will not neglect her. We know that Mary, will be praying with the disciples in the upper room, after his resurrection, Acts 1 14, and after that, she drops out of the picture. As long as she lived, John would keep her in his home, and care for her, as the Lord Jesus asked him to do. After this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon hyssop, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished, and he bowed his head, and gave up the ghost, John 19:28-30. John carefully shows us that scripture is being fulfilled. There are chapters in the Old Testament that are especially concerned with the crucifixion. I would list Psalm 22, Genesis 22, Isaiah 53, and Leviticus 16. There are 28 prophecies fulfilled while he was hanging on the cross. I thirst, is the fulfillment of Psalm 69 21. It is finished. What was finished? Your redemption, and my redemption, was finished. In his report to the Father, he had said, I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do, John 17 4. The Jews therefore, because it was the preparation, that the bodies should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was an high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken, and that they might be taken away. 
Then came the soldiers, and brake the legs of the first, and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus, and saw that he was dead already, they brake not his legs, but one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. And he that saw it bear record, and his record is true, and he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe. For these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled, a bone of him shall not be broken. And again, another scripture saith, they shall look on him whom they pierced, John 19 31-37. The first prophecy that John mentions was fulfilled. It says, he keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken, Psalm 34 20. The second one still awaits fulfillment. They shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him, as one mourneth for his only son. Zechariah 12 10. He has been pierced. That part has been fulfilled. But Zechariah says that he shall return again, and when he comes, then they shall look upon the one, whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him. Burial in the tomb of Joseph. We are dealing with facts, and the great historical facts of the Gospel. What is the Gospel? Paul defines it for us. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15 3-4. These are the central facts of the Gospel. Our salvation is based on our relationship to those facts, and to the person of Jesus Christ. Do you trust Him? Do you have faith in what He did for you when He died on the cross? Do you believe that He died a vicarious, substitutionary, redemptive death for you? And after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave. He came therefore, and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night, and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about an hundred pound weight. Then, they took the body of Jesus and wrapped it in linen clothes, with the spices, as the manner of the Jews is to bury, John 1938-40. The two men who handle the body of Jesus are both prominent men. Joseph of Arimathea is a rich man, and Nicodemus is the ruler of the Jews, who had come to Jesus by night. They were both secret disciples, but now they come out in the open for the first time. Let's not be too critical of these men. They had stayed in the background, but now that the Lord's disciples have all scattered like sheep and gone under cover, these two men come out in the open. Because the children of Israel had lived in Egypt, some believed that they were the ones who perfected the method of embalming that the Egyptians used. The child of God in the Old Testament, as well as the New Testament, has always believed that the body will rise again. It is sown in corruption, it will be raised in incorruption. It is sown in weakness, it will be raised in power. It will be a glorified body. For that reason, the child of God has a reverence and a care for the body. The custom was to use about half the body weight of spices, so we can guess that the Lord Jesus weighed about 200 pounds. They would prepare the body by rubbing it with myrrh and aloes, then wrapping it with linen strips. That would seal it, and keep out the air. They would begin with a finger, then wrap all the fingers that way, then the hand, the arm, and the whole body. In other words, they wrapped the body of the Lord Jesus like a mummy. Now, John mentions specifically that they wrapped the body in the linen cloth, using the spices, because this is a very important detail for him. You remember, that on the resurrection morning, when John saw the linen lying there, and the body not in it, he understood that the resurrection had taken place, and he believed. Now, in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new sepulcher, wherein was never man yet laid. There, laid they Jesus therefore, because of the Jews' preparation day, for the sepulcher was nigh at hand, John 1941-42. They had to hurry, because of the approaching Passover, and apparently, they didn't get the embalming process completely finished. This explains why the women bought more spices, and planned to come to care for the body of the Lord after the feast day. This moves us into the next glorious chapter.